Okay, so there is one last little um, iPad learning application that I'm going to be showing you today, and um, that is going to be the CK12 Flexbook. It is the little light blue textbook um, looking application next to the CK12 simulations. Let's go ahead and click on it. I love this application. I love it so, so, so much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sign in with my Google account. Alrighty. So, um, this is a new iPad. I literally just got this um, a few days ago. The other iPad I had um, was having some issues. So, that's why the CK. 12 um, flexbook isn't added yet but I'm going to go ahead and click on science as a subject and notice the second from the bottom is chemistry so you have chemistry and physics which is nice to know um, so if you were interested in teaching integrated chemistry physics this is also your go-to it's great for biologists and earth science um, you really just can't go wrong. There's thousands of books on the CK12 Flexbook. Okay, so um, notice that on the chemistry, uh, we have grades 10 and 11 for the basic, 10, 11, 12, 10, 11, 12, 10, 11, 9, right? So um, what I really like about that is that the grades are listed. Um, so you kind of get an idea about what you should be um, considering for your particular classroom. Of course, I went with the basic for my demonstration, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Look at that. I can download that entire textbook offline. You never have to have your kids come into the classroom and say, teacher, I couldn't get on my textbook because the website wasn't working. No. They can download an entire chapter by chapter or the entire book. Um, I just uploaded a document for the introduction to chemistry, so we're going to go ahead and look at that real quick. This is the same document, isn't it? Oh, no, 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 no. I guess I went to the next one. We'll go to section 1-1. One, one. Okay. So this is the document that I went in and edited so that there is a note section. Um, this is teaching reading synthesis and chemistry. It's really critical if we're going to have inquiry-based learners that you teach them how to read. There are so many domain-specific terms that can be confusing for students. and. Um, I've gone over domain specific terms a million times, but I'll say it again, you know. Um, there, it's hard to necessarily get a good picture just from one way of looking at something in text. Um, for instance, I always go to the word properties um, because if I told my kids, um, tell me about the properties of such and such, and I wasn't specific enough or whatever, um, they would probably assume that I was talking about, um, I don't know, you know, properties or my personal property, like this is my backpack, this is my set of colored pencils, this is my um, paper art, or um, my property is my bed at my home, or um, public property is uh, a state park, something like that. So um, domain specific terms are embedded in not just the English language, but um, in languages across the world. And so anytime you're looking at a dictionary and you see more than one definition, for every number beside that definition is a domain for that word because it's used in a different context for every number beside that word in the dictionary. <laughs> Um, and so that's why in dictionaries we get like four and five definitions. 
that's confusing for our kids. Um, so we need to teach them to think critically about what they're reading and then also not base assumptions that uh, uh, on what they think they know is a definition. So don't, you know, training them um, out of the habit of, of assumption um, is really hard. So this is a way to kind of get them to think critically um, by uh, downloading this, making sure they have access to it. Um, if you go on to... Um, my uh, web website you will see let's go ahead and bring up my website real quick just for reference um, there we go if you go to my website in the teaching resources tab I have a chemistry reading section and it's called taking notes in chemistry okay so um, this particular worksheet has been developed to go in conjunction um, it was originally for um, something else, and I and I uh, rewrote it for um, chemistry. Um, so the idea is is that we're not teaching kids how to take notes, basing it off of facts. Um, so there are only three simple facts that I tell the kids to. Um, stick to and that way they know that their notes are clear concise um, I say you know if, if it's not a synonym if it's not a definition and if it's not a paragraph summary in one sentence then you don't need to write it down because um, the rest can be extraneous information so this is kind of cutting out all that extraneous information um, and this is just like I'm, I'm currently in a um, bonding and molecular structure um, unit so I went ahead and um, extrapolated this um, paragraph uh, directly from the textbook being used in the classroom. Um, now although this is directly from a textbook the science reading example is directly from a textbook in the classroom um, I still prefer the CK12 flex books. Um, why? Because um, they're available online, um, offline, just just like um, uh, you know, they can download the books and um, read. And like I said, you know, they're available offline. But I, as a teacher, can go in. I can control copy this, um, paste it into a Microsoft Word document, and then I can get an edited version of that, um, which I will show you right here. Um, nope, right here. Offline reference software. Let's go there. Okay, it's thinking about it. All right, so um, this is an example. See, that's the same thing, but I have a note section, and that note section right there on the right-hand side is all they need. It's all they need. They need their name and their period and their notes. Um, Nobody really cares about dates anymore. It's a shame, but it's just not practical as much. You know, when they're in high school, it's just not as practical. So, um, their their only dates they're considered with um, considering uh, are um, when they have a social event or um, are they working. <laughs> That's what I get from my kids. Oh, you know, what is the date? What is the date today? None of them know. None of them know, so just don't put it on the paper. Just put the name in the period. Um, so, uh, I don't know. You probably feel differently about that. But anyway, I just thought that's my two cents. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Um, so then teaching resources, again, chemistry reading, and then that is the um, taking notes in chemistry tab right there. Okay. Um, so let's go back and look at the flexbook again. See, it's the same exact material. I just edited it, and I go through how I edited it um, on uh, the other section of my um, website, which is um, on the actual teaching resources um, homepage. When you just click on that, um, this is my uh, bridging the gap in chemical education, teaching high school chemistry with forward thinking. Um, mini book and it's 49 pages and I um, basically teach other teachers 
um, how to um, edit their documents so that um, they can get enough white space. Uh, so if you're not super familiar with how to use um, Microsoft Word to edit um, uh, instruction materials, um, I go into that um, and I go into you know uh, effective font choices for um, for different types of learners. Um, so um, here's that. And um, yeah, so let's, here it is right there. So you see how I take the bottom bar and I shift it over to the right, the little bottom triangle. That's really after you control um, an A or command A, depending on uh, what kind of computer you're using, um, it will select all the text. And then once all this text is selected, you'll use the ruler to move it over. So that's all that's about. Um, but yeah, this is this is why I use the Flexbooks. Um, they, they can be downloaded. Um, and uh, the kids don't have to have internet access. Um, 